the community and to help revitalize the community once they've established control of that area. All right, talking about futures, before 9-11, uh, I, I think this article was extreme. As I read it yesterday trying to prepare this presentation, I was amazed by what this man said. This is an article was published in 2001. It was a chapter in 2001, but it was written in 2000 by Colonel Charles J. Dunlop. He said, police and military collaboration is poised to increase exponentially because of the threat of catastrophic terrorism. Okay, meaning weapons of mass destruction and cyber terrorism specifically. He actually pointed out and said, the Homeland Defense Department was, I mean, he actually cited saying that they tried to develop the Homeland Defense Department, <laughs> but they decided we didn't need it. Within a year, actually within a few months of its publication, we were developing the Homeland Defense. And he was right. Okay? Threats that have the potential, again, this is what he quotes, have the potential to overwhelm police resources and inflict casualties of a wartime scale. The only agency capable of handling it is the military. The implications now, since we've had September 11th, Palace is impacted and will continue to impact the militarization of police. In terms of manpower, there's been a lot more direct military involvement. We hear all the time, my brother lives in D.C., he was wanting to get a pilot's license. And he says every time they boost the security up one level, no one can fly. Okay? Constantly air patrols, harbor patrols in certain areas uh, that have large ports, some crowd control in certain cities. Increased training. Training is, is really ratcheted up a lot more. Weapons of mass destruction, bioterrorism, chemical, terror response, not just training law enforcement, but training all, doors, all sorts of branches. Also, development of a Department of Defense cybercrime lab. Again, the fear of cyber terrorism. Uh, as Thomas mentioned, the, the military is far more experienced in this whole area of cybercrime and cyberterrorism than local police are. Okay? And they are increasingly becoming the go-to agency in this. Again, they are working with local law enforcement. In terms of weapons and technology, again, the direct process has been kicked up a notch. Right? New agencies have been developed. Uh, the one that I'll talk about here briefly is called the TIA. It was originally Total Information Awareness. And they had a nice little symbol for it. I didn't put it in the presentation. But people didn't like it, so they changed it to Terrorism Information Awareness. All right. What this agency was defined, here's a slide before they took this one off of their webpage. What this agency is, is, is under DARPA, they're developing huge databases. If you look at the things that they're trying to gather data on, biometric data, your face, fingerprints, gait, iris, transactional data, financial, education, travel, medical, veterinary, all kinds of information. Put it on the database, my favorite part is down here, plausible futures. From that, from every bit of information about you, they try to develop plausible futures. The one that's been put on their web page now, for the terrorism information awareness, is a little different, but still shows the interrelatedness between the military and local law enforcement. On the top, DOD and foreign, foreign intel, intel, intelligence community. On the bottom, law enforcement community, both gathering data, both putting it all into the same hopper, same kind of information as the slide before. They just don't outline it as well. Then down at the bottom again, plausible futures, options, policy. Yeah. Closer integration between military and law enforcement. Some other things under the TIA that are also developing. Uh, I'm not sure how much Thomas talked about this, but other little things, biometrics, face recognition, gait recognition, which is going to recognize you by how you walk, and iris recognition, all being developed by the military for local law enforcement. All right, finally, implications for ideology. Rationale for militaristic ideology within policing has changed since September 11th. Again, we saw in the early 80s and in the 80s, it was largely through the drug war that we moved towards this militaristic ideology. Now it's terrorism and drugs. Drugs have not been supplanted. In fact, they've been integrated. If you see the television ads, you're seeing <coughs> more about the drug dealer. If you buy marijuana from him, you're supporting terrorism. All right, it's been intertwined. We're not getting rid of drugs. It's drugs and terrorism. In fact, I think this will allow for even more militarism within the two. All right? Police paramilitary usage. Will it change? Probably, but how? This is the big question. Don't really know. Reactive focus, we may go to more reactive. With threats of terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, we may be afraid to put them out on more proactive call-outs, keep them back in case there are serious situations. But you also may see with more proactive focus with the decrease of the, the leniency in the search and seizure laws that have come from through the Patriot Act. All right, so you may see more of the intertwine of using these uh, focus of 
SWAT teams. Final thoughts. Continue to accelerate the blurring of the police military distinctions. I think it's just going to get worse and worse. It's going to farther down that continuum. All right. In our tactics, the police use are probably going to become more militaristic. In the tools, the weapons, and stuff, the technology the police use, we know it's going to become greater reliance on on military technology. Our view of criminals, the ideology wise, we're going to see them more as enemies. We get this more militaristic bent. Our focus, we start seeing people not as criminals, not as civilians, not as someone's brother, but as an enemy, as an enemy combatant. Right? And acceptance of civil liberties collateral damage. Right? There is no way, if, if we, I mean, this was something that was, was mentioned in one of the articles, if you start allowing the military to handle these issues, they are not trained for it, there will be collateral damage. They're not designed to be police officers. Right? And we will see collateral damage with our civil liberties. Will it be accepted? It may be because of the fear that we need to, to protect ourselves. And that's it. I'm going to turn it over quickly. So we can probably get some discussion.